Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Castello, Board Certified Family Practice, and today I want to talk to you about carbohydrates, and you can use them to your advantage for weight loss. There's three basic nutrients. There's the carbohydrate, protein, and fat. Carbohydrates and protein have four calories per gram, and fat has nine calories per gram, so more than twice the density and calories per size that protein and carbohydrates do. Carbohydrates can be broken down into simple carbohydrates and complex carbohydrates. Uh, simple carbohydrates or simple sugars would be things like sugar, uh, white bread, white pasta, potatoes, uh, soda pop, sweets, alcohol are all simple sugars or simple carbohydrates. Not good for you. Uh, complex carbohydrates would be whole grains and vegetables and uh, food like that that's a little bit better for you. If you want to think of simple sugars or carbohydrates as individual pearls and complex carbohydrates as being a chain of pearls or string of pearls. So your body can't digest a string of pearls. It has to break it down into individual pearls before they're ready to be absorbed into your bloodstream for energy. When you eat simple sugars or simple carbohydrates, you literally are digesting or eating pearls that are already broken into individual pieces and they're very quickly absorbed and very quickly put into the bloodstream and there's a rise in blood sugar and then a significant insulin release in response to the load of sugar. When you eat a complex carbohydrate, it may still be the same number of grams of sugar and may actually be the same amount of calories, but as a string of carbohydrates or string of pearls, your body literally has to break them into individual components before it can be put into your bloodstream and used as energy. So it's a much slower absorption, a much more steady rise in blood sugar, and a much slower or lower insulin release in response to the same amount of carbohydrate. Uh, we talked before about how insulin makes your blood sugar drop, insulin makes you hungry, insulin makes you store fat, so you definitely want to limit the amount of insulin your body produces and by limiting the simple carbohydrates or simple sugars, you ins the insulin you release is limited and you have less of those issues. When you eat Chinese food and you're hungry an hour later, literally it's true uh, because Chinese food is a bunch of rice and simple sugar and you have a very prompt rise in blood sugar, a significant insulin release and all that sugar is cleared out of your system in a short time and you actually become low blood sugar and hungry and then have to eat again an hour later. There's something called glycemic index, and you can look up glycemic index of different foods, and that basically tells you how sugary the food is. So what they did was they take different foods and they gave them to people to eat, and they measured their blood sugar and insulin response. And foods with low glycemic indexes were more slowly absorbed. They had a uh, lesser degree of rise of blood sugar and a lesser insulin release. Uh, high glycemic foods uh, had a much rapid onset of release into the bloodstream, the insulin levels were higher, so you want to choose foods that have a low glycemic index and avoid foods that have a high glycemic index. An example would be an apple versus a banana. Both are fruits, both have carbohydrates. An apple is roughage and the skin of the apple is hard to digest and apple has a low glycemic index, whereas banana you peel off the rough stuff and you eat the meat or the sweet stuff out of the middle and a banana has a very high glycemic index, so that would be a fruit that you'd want to avoid. Avoid. Um, you can look up different foods, so look up uh, glycemic index of fruits, glycemic index of vegetables, glycemic index of food, and find foods that have a lower glycemic index and try and stick with those. Another way that you can manage uh, the sugar content or how much sugar or food absorbs and how it impacts your insulin levels is by making sure you don't eat carbohydrates by themselves. Um, this is the theory behind the zone diet. So you want to mix carbohydrates with protein or fat, and the protein and fat is a little bit slower to absorb or digest, so that slows the release of the sugar carbohydrate uh, into your bloodstream. As an example, uh, if you compared ice cream cream to sherbet. Uh, ice cream has milk fat, it has protein as well as sugar. Uh, ice cream has a relatively low glycemic index. The fat and the protein in the ice cream uh, has it make the absorption a little bit slower and impacts your sugar and your insulin levels less. Sherbet is fat free, that sounds good on the surface, but it's 100% sugar and it's already simple sugar so that's literally like taking sugar and shirting it into your veins and you get this big insulin rise. So honestly if you had the choice between a serving of ice cream or a serving of sherbet, you probably should eat the ice cream even though it's got a little bit more calories. 
my version of the zone diet is if I am going to eat a piece of apple pie for dessert. I like apple pie. It's sugary. Um, the crust has got sugar in it. Um, not good for me. When I eat the meal, I'll have the pork chop, but I'll avoid the bread. I'll avoid the potato, um, knowing that I'm going to have sugar after the fact and the combination of the pork chop sitting in my stomach. When I eat my piece of apple pie, the pork chop slows the absorption. I don't have quite that rise in sugar, and you can get away then with eating a little bit of cheating food um, and have it not be quite as bad for you. So you could also look up the zone diet. That's also a good uh, approach, and that's kind of halfway between uh, Adkins diet, which is straight protein and fat and no carbohydrates, and a low-fat diet, which uh, I, both of them are kind of hard to stick by. So the zone's a nice, happy medium. For those of you that are drinkers out there and you drink the low carbohydrate beer, I've got bad news for you. Um, if you have a 100 calorie beer um, that has 4 grams of carbohydrates, it's actually got 20 grams of 25 grams of carbohydrates. The 4 grams are the actual grain or the barley or the wheat that's in the beer. That's what's considered food carbohydrates. The other 90 calories is actually alcohol, which is a sugar carbohydrate as well. So when you're doing your calculations for your uh, carbohydrates, if you're doing something like the zone diet, it's not 4 grams of carbohydrates, it's actually 25. And the way the math works is 100 calories divided by 4 is 25 uh, grams. So for 25 grams of carbohydrates in a beer, there's no protein in beer, uh, there's no fat in beer, so they're all uh, carbohydrates and it's alcohol, which is a carbohydrate as well. We talked about alcohol and the White Castle phenomenon on a previous video as well, so that's actually a terrible thing to do if you're on the low glycemic index. Uh, look up carbohydrates on your food. Hopefully foods are going to tell you how many grams of whole grain are in them. Um, you can look on the back and see how many grams of sugar there are. Uh, fiber is considered carbohydrate, but it doesn't add any calories, and that's a good carbohydrate as well, so you want to find high fiber food as well. Dr. Greg Castello, thanks.